Well, that is a good neighbor. I haven't done a homeless video in a while, but today the homeless won. They won the battle over the street. A neighborhood has gathered their own money to put up rocks to barricade drug dealers from coming onto their street. Just a couple simple rocks, it worked. That shoved them away to another block. Well, people were up in arms about how dare you run away the homeless and the drug dealers. They want, advocacy rights want these people there. Well, they pushed the rocks out into the streets and now the homeless win. They get their street back and they get to deal their drugs right in front of these people's homes. What's the world coming to? Tattoo your face and move rocks into the street. Watch this news story, tell me what you think. People dying in the streets. All right, thanks Darren. There is no end in sight for the battle of large boulders in one San Francisco neighborhood. Neighbors got together to have the large rocks put on the sidewalk two weeks ago to prevent drug dealing and homeless encampments near Market and Dolores. But as KPIX 5's Katie Nielsen reports, the massive rocks keep ending up on the street and now the city is caught between a rock and a hard place. This is the Boulder Battleground. These dozen massive rocks shoved into the street sometime overnight in an apparent protest. This all started two weeks ago when some neighbors got together to put the rocks on the sidewalk to deter homeless encampments and the open use and sales of drugs. Since then, it's been nothing but a battle. People keep pushing the rocks into the street and crews from San Francisco's Department of Public Works keep putting them back on the sidewalk, most recently yesterday afternoon. And today, they're back in the road. This cycle has actually happened three times in the past week. But neighbors are now divided on whether the massive boulders are the right answer to San Francisco's homeless crisis. Others say they're just fed up with the city's lack of action. There's frequently, you know, tents, people sleeping, people taking drugs. I've seen people shoot up here and I'm just trying to walk down the street with my dog. So I completely understood why whoever placed the rocks here, what their motivation was. I just think it's incredible how whole blocks and neighborhoods and neighbors can pull together and spend so much effort, time and money into something that doesn't seem the most positive or productive into the problem they're trying to solve. Wesley spent hours this afternoon writing messages of love in sidewalk chalk right near the entrance to the Clinton Park Alley, just a few yards from the boulders. He said he wants to encourage dialogue between neighbors and has been amazed at how much motion the rocks generated on both sides. A spokesperson with San Francisco's Department of Public Works said they did send crews out this morning to put up the cones and caution tape around the boulders that are in the street, but they do not have any plans currently to put them back on the sidewalks. Instead, they said they're looking at all options and will continue to work with and support the neighbors. In San Francisco, Katie Nielsen, KPIX 5. Today of a bar owner in San Francisco who shut his doors for good because drug dealers and users were driving away customers. While a reporter, Melissa Kane, was doing her live report, a man collapsed behind her and was taken away in an ambulance. Melissa Kane went back to the streets today to follow up on the story for us. Melissa? Now, we were here yesterday, just on 7th Street, a little south of Market, bringing you the story of how this bar called Mr. Smith's is closing. While we were on camera, on the corner right over there, where it says dead end, a man actually collapsed and had to be taken to the hospital in an ambulance, although one witness told us today that he actually died there on the sidewalk. We talked to locals who have to work here on this stretch of 7th Street every day, and they tell us this is a common occurrence and it's getting worse. We set up our camera on 7th Street near Market, and it wasn't long before we heard sirens. I call the sirens in the area, I've been here so long, the, the 7th Street serenade. Richard Perry has had an art studio on this block for 30 years. He says alcoholics used to congregate here, but they weren't violent. That's not the case anymore for these drug users and dealers. People have been intimidated. Some people have been stabbed. Uh, 
it's it's worse. I've been here for several years and it was always kind of a dodgy neighborhood, but in the last six months to a year, it's as if they've sort of taken over this corner and it really attracts a rough crowd. With dealers openly selling drugs, some customers just can't wait to use them. That means many people here are high. Some block doorways, some urinate and defecate, some leave their used needles around, and some just pass out. We have people here now and, and pretty soon uh, after they shoot up, they will be uh, incapacitated and we have to deal with that. Peter Sellers is the building manager at 26 7th Street. He and his employees used to call 911 about twice a week to report people in distress. Now it's five times a week. According to fire department statistics, in 2013 on this block of 7th Street, 26 people were either found dead or transported to a hospital by ambulance. By 2017, it was 64. But in 2018, it jumped to 126. This year, it's on track to have 141, all on this single block. For the people who work here, being surrounded by increasing levels of drug use is stressful and scary and heartbreaking. One time it was on a Christmas day, you know, that finding a gentleman dead in our doorway, and it's tough. Now, Mr. Sellers told us as the building manager, he negotiated the lease for CVS Pharmacy to come to this neighborhood. He was hoping that it would actually improve the scene here, he said, but instead it's become the most shoplifted CVS in America. Live in San Francisco, Melissa Kane, KPIX5.